Hey guys, welcome to an absolutely crucial lesson. Uh, today we're going to find out what the root cause of all of human psychological suffering is. <clears throat> That's right, there's only one cause for all of human suffering. What is suffering? What happens exactly when we suffer? I'll get into this later in later lessons. I'll get into the dynamics of it, the mechanics of it, the energetics of it. But basically, suffering is the difference you feel or the distance, you could put it that way too, the distance you feel between the vibration, the state of your true self and the state or vibration of your positioned self. Now by positioned self, I mean your lower self or your physical mind based self, your personality self, your I am this based self, whatever you want to call that. But your sense of I am this individual, where you place that in the frequency scale of what is possible, if that is far removed, far out of sync from the true natural frequency with which you are always already inundated because you cannot not have that core frequency of who you truly are, the further away that positioned self is removed from your true self, the greater the amount of suffering you experience, the greater the degree of pain that you experience. Next header, why desire is not the problem. Oftentimes people equate suffering with desire, with passion, with wanting things. But this is a grave misunderstanding. Even in spiritual teachings, even by very clear headed spiritual teachers, I've heard them say and proclaim that desire is the cause of all suffering. This is simply not true. It's not true. It's completely mechanically not true. Desire does not have an ounce of suffering carried with itself. It doesn't carry any suffering with it. It doesn't contain any suffering. So the problem is not desire. The problem again is the idea that lack exists. So what is the core root of all suffering? It is the idea that lack exists. It's the belief in lack. So when a desire comes up, we often think that, oh, that equates to pain because I can't always have what I want. And, um, if I can't have what I desire, if I have so much passion for something, but that something is lacking, hint, that something is not here, then I suffer, then I hurt, then I feel pain. And so we've just very bluntly called desire the source of all suffering, where actually desire is the source of our connection to our true self. So this is a grave misunderstanding and I won't allow any concessions on this idea. Desire is not the cause of suffering. Desire is actually what will liberate you. Desire is actually the solution, not the cause, not the problem. What is the problem? It's when that desire kicks in, when you are activated, when your higher self communicates to you, when your true being's frequency starts to pour through your body-mind experience, so to speak, that is great. That is what aligns you with your true self. It's perfect. It's the um, solution to all suffering. But then what happens is we filter that through an idea of lack. We believe that we can't have what we desire. It's not possible. It is not here. It is lacking. It could never completely come to fruition, etc. So we believe in lack of possibility in lack of perhaps a worthiness. Oh, I'm not worthy of wanting this or actually getting what I desire or actually becoming that being, that type of being that I desire to become. All the things that inspired me, I am not worthy of these things. So we believe in a lack of worthiness, a lack of um, possibility or a lack of well-being or a lack of the presence of the thing that we desire. Those are all lack beliefs. Those have nothing to do, mechanically speaking, energetically speaking, structurally speaking, with the energy of desire. Desire itself is free. Desire itself is passion. Desire itself is our telephone line to our higher selves. Is, is that frequency that we experience when we are really excited, when we're really passionate about something. So let desire be your savior. Let it not be your obstacle. What is your obstacle? It's the idea that it lack can exist. It's believing in the thought of lack. So instead of 
trying to negate or suppress your desires, which is very, very, very unhealthy because that's the sole reason why you're here. It's to desire, to create, to come forth, to express, to seek out, to discover, to share. All these things are based on your desire. There's no other way for you to tell what you are supposed to be doing here. There's no other way for you to know who you are except through desire, through resonance, through excitement, through ecstasy, through passion, through creativity, through inspiration. So honor desire and in a sense dishonor the idea of lack. Stop believing that lack exists. And we'll get, again, we'll get more into this later on, but it's very crucial that for now you realize that lack is not something that exists and that's exactly why it hurts. Now, if lack would exist, it would feel good to believe that lack exists because it would be true. You see, suffering is caused when we believe in something that's not true, when we position ourselves removed from the true frequency of our being. When we believe in lack in any form, we contract, we feel pain, we feel hurt, we suffer because, precisely because it's not a true fact of existence. It does not exist. Doesn't matter what the scenario looks like. Doesn't matter what your parents have told you to label that experience as. Doesn't matter how the people around you would label that experience as. Lack is a fundamental impossibility. Everything is possible except for lack. So when you believe in lack, you're carrying with you a vibration of an impossibility, something that does not compute with the true frequency of the nature of reality, of your true self, in other words. Hence you suffer, hence you feel pain, hence you struggle, hence it's all hard and difficult and painful. If you would only remove the idea that lack can exist, you would cease to suffer. That's right. If you had no lack belief whatsoever, 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 it would be absolutely impossible for you to psychologically suffer. Absolutely impossible for you to psychologically suffer. Challenges would still be present. You would still be challenged. You would still be brought to the edge of your experience so that you can continuously expand your horizon of what is possible and who you truly are and what you are capable of and what you desire to create. And you would still generate contrast in your life of what you prefer, what you don't prefer and all that. But those are amazing tools to fine tune your vibration, your positioned vibration, to be in complete alignment with your true, true vibration. But lack, without lack, there is no psychological suffering. One thing that often trips us up and that often generates in us the idea that lack can actually exist is our tendency to look outward, to look at external circumstances, to look onto physical reality and based on the objects we see and the amount of objects we see and the location of the objects that we perceive. It's very tempting to then say, well, this object is over here. It's not over there. It's in my hand. It's not in your hand or it's in your hand. It's not in my hand. So based on physical linear reality, which is only one slice of all the infinite parallel realities that exist that coexist within this single moment, based on just one slice of physical reality, which has a purpose, which has a story to tell, yes, we could conclude that there is a lack of an apple over here because I have the apple over here. I just moved it from your hand to my hand. So now you are lacking the apple. This is a very basic example, but this is what we constantly do. We constantly refer to our physical circumstances and based on that, we determine if we're lacking something or not. This is a crucial mistake. Our Focus should become more and more non-physically oriented. Why? Because non-physical reality is much closer in alignment with the clarity of the truth of the nature of reality. So the more you are physically oriented, the more what you're doing is you're focusing your consciousness in on this very thin, limited physical slice. There's one single configuration of energy that coexists with all the other infinite possible configurations of realities. But then you dictate your reality, you base your reality off of just this one physical slice uh, that contains only so many objects. And if I give this away to you, then I start liking what I just gave away to you, etc. So physical reality is prone to inspire the idea that lack is an actuality. 
So simply forego your focus on physical reality a little bit more if you can. Stop focusing, stop taking your cue from circumstances. This is another way of saying this. So don't take your cue from your circumstances. Don't look at your circumstances and then based on that, believe that something is either lacking or present. Know that on a non-physical level, on an existence level, on a timeless level, all possible realities always already exist and they coexist. And whenever you shift your frequency, you are literally shifting realities. And when you shift into another reality, suddenly there are two apples. Suddenly an opportunity arises that you could not have conceived of in the other reality. But because you actually tuned into the truth of your being, the abundance of your being, you were not lost in taking your cue from physical circumstances. You were not limiting your focus down into lack. You were not suffering, in other words, because you did not perceive any lack. And if you don't perceive any lack, you can't suffer. And in that state of freedom, in that state of joy and love and abundance, you shifted your position self into an alternate physical even reality that now suddenly does offer the things that you desire simply because you maintained your happiness regardless of circumstances, regardless of what your physical slice may have indicated or what other people told you to define your physical circumstances as. Circumstances don't define their own lack. We do that. In other words, even if I would give my apple away to you, then we are telling ourselves the story that we are lacking an apple because we just gave it away to another person. The circumstance itself is not telling that story. So even within the limited range of a single slice of physical reality, even within this one paradigm that you have generated for this exact moment, yes, there is not five videos displaying at the same time. You're just watching one video. But that does not mean you're lacking the other four videos unless you say that you are. If you give that apple away to someone else, that does not mean you are lacking an apple unless you say that it does. So it is whatever you say it is. And however you choose to define your physical reality is how you will experience that physical reality. So if your definitions are always rooted in the idea that something is missing, something is lacking, something is imperfect, something is wrong, something is off, then you will generate a whole lot of suffering for yourself because you're placing your frequency self, your position self outside of your true frequency self. And so you suffer because you feel the distance. You feel that you're removing yourself away from home. So you start longing back home. So whenever something happens that seems to indicate lack, apply the idea of seeing past your own label into the actual presence of that moment and see if the apple is speaking to you and saying, oh, I just left your hand or you no longer own me, you no longer have me. Is anything in that physical scenario telling you, indicating that there is a lack of something? If you were to be completely mentally silent, meaning not a thought, not a word in your mind, would you still experience lack when someone steals your apple? When someone steals your money? With zero thoughts, would you still experience lack? Would you still experience suffering? You would not. I'm not saying the answer is to have no thoughts. I'm simply showing you that the example of no thoughts shows us that our entire experience is generated by the way we define what we see. So circumstances don't define their own lack. We do. So what I'm saying is that even in your physical circumstances, even when things seem to be lacking, you can turn that definition around. You can see that actually that's not true. It's not actually a given that there is lack. If there was, then you'd be lacking things all the time. Because right now you're lacking a fork in your hand, but you're not defining it that way. You're not suffering because you don't have a fork in your hand. Why? Because it's not relevant. Why? Because it's not meaningful to you at this moment. So why would you define the things that are meaningful to you as lacking when they're not physically present in that single slice of one of the potential realities that you could choose from? Why would you focus in on that limitation? Why would you focus in on that physical idea that something is lacking? When infinite realities are lacking right now, you're not aware of 
the endlessness of all that is. But that doesn't make you lacking anything. It simply means that your present circumstance is what is the relevant chosen option for you. But essentially, structurally speaking, that does not imply lack. And that means, this fact means, that you don't have to suffer over anything unless you want to. Again, desire is not the problem. Desire and passion, desire for things even, is not the issue. The issue is that we define lack when there is none possible in existence. So the homework for this lesson is for you to observe in between this lesson and the next lesson, but feel free to continue this throughout the next few lessons because it's a very helpful realization regardless. But become really aware of every time you believe you define there to be any lack in your experience. Anytime you believe lack exists, you start noticing contraction, you start noticing struggle, you start noticing depression, you start noticing anxiety, you start noticing stress. So as soon as you notice stress factors of any kind, see how you can trace that back to the idea you had that lack is an actual thing. So I want you to simply become really clear on the fact that this is the only cause of human suffering. There is no type of suffering that I have found, and let's just limit this uh, to avoid intellectual and spiritual debates, let's just limit this to psychological suffering, although yes, my statement is that the large majority of physical suffering is also actually caused by the belief in lack. But that aside for a moment, just focusing on psychological suffering, what I want you to be absolutely clear on experientially in your own life, in your own mind, within your own psyche, is to see in everyday life, in action, how every time you generate suffering for yourself, it's because you define there to be lack of some kind. Either lack existing right now, something is missing. Either lack in the past, oh, I should have taken this option. Or lack in the future, oh, if I don't keep working this nasty little job that I don't resonate with, that it does not excite me, then I will lack money in the future. Therefore, let me contract and let me play it safe and keep doing this thing. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. You need to honor your belief systems to an extent. And we'll get into all of this, like how to free yourself up from those limiting beliefs. But for now, all you need to see is very clearly that every moment you psychologically, physically suffer, and by physically now, I mean energetically, physically, like contraction, physically. Every time you experience a suffering sensation, see how you can trace that back to having had some kind of thought about, oh, if I do this, this will lack. Or if I don't do this, this will lack. It's always based on the belief that lack can exist. Become aware of that, A. And B, become aware of why that hurts. It hurts because it's not true. It hurts because it's a mis- perception. It's a misperceived definition. It's a misaligned definition of what is true. You are removing yourself from your core frequency. You are placing yourself outside of yourself. That's why it hurts. The circumstances never ever hurt. What hurts is your belief that something is lacking and that belief is out of vibrational alignment with the truth of reality. And that's why it hurts because you're distancing yourself from truth. Thank you.